And then real Tom Clancy alive and well here in this bracket on TNS tonight. Uh, gonna be getting the Tsurugi into Carmine. All righty. So wonderful of Tom Clancy to grace us with the presence. I'm so back happy. Under night. <laughs> Into it already. Looking for starting off on the offensive, able to sneak one past real Tom Clancy, and we're going all the way to the corner. This is, I mean, corner position is always something that you want to buy for in in uni because it's so important, and you can see. Yokonigbo doing a really great job setting up the blood puddles and using those DPs repeatedly going to set up more puddles here while real Tom Clancy is trapped. And so he just has to be really careful. Okay, then we got out of the corner from that with the shield. I like the way, though, that Yokonigbo was controlling both the ground and airspace with that um, 6B held projectile. Doing a very good job of stopping the real Tom Clancy. Feeling comfortable oh. advancing out of her. And Speaking of, uh, bit of getting a bit uncomfortable, real Tom Clancy attempted that reversal on defense to no avail. Yeah, I could see the idea because Yokonigabo has been so aggressive the entire time. Yeah, the, and like right there, it's a great combo extension as well. But if you whiff it, you just have to sit there during those recovery frames and suffer. And the gold throw reversal out. I like that from real Tom Clancy. Keeping up the momentum, the overhead. Catching the dome on the Carmine, but the combo Ooh. jump gives him another chance. Ah, oh, not that time. That was really close. So answering with a perfect. And that's always my favorite storyline is when somebody comes in, really takes a beating, and then answers back with a perfect. So 1-1 one, one already in the first game that we have here on TNS this Saturday. And getting to see some real top tier Surugi gameplay, and I'm happy. Already showing us the power of that guard point on 2C, putting Yokonigbo down in the corner. Keeping up this pressure with a CS. Love the delays on all the buttons, making sure Yokonigbo does not want to commit to anything. Hmm, interesting with the throw there, but I like the low to come in to start the combo anew. The pressure that Real Tom Clancy is putting out is fantastic using the EXDP. Not quite enough to kill, but then again, a CS continues the pressure, EX again, and then with the overhead, because Tom Clancy was already in the air, was able to take that round. Great use of system mechanics, particularly the chain shift. Uh, I know that some people are new and some people are not, so we're going to be using some colloquialisms and some shortenings of words that we see here a lot in uni. CS, if you don't know, is chain shift. It's when you absorb grid to get some meter over in the corner, and that is what Tom Clancy was doing excellently in that previous game. Yeah, allowing Tom Clancy to keep up the offensive even after like the block overhead, you have to chain shift and get yourself another turn and continue the offense. In this game, though, Yokonigbo is the one who is generating so much momentum for themselves that they already put Tom Clancy in the corner. Yeah, but thinking about the last set, I mean, this was akin to what happened the first uh, round of the last game, and Tom Clancy really came back and got some good reads. The run under was a bit too far because Yokonigbo's bouncing was very ambiguous, just the way the character bounced. And now this is giving him another chance. Get one blood puddle. What's the setup here? That was really interesting that he chose to run to the other side. Get sandwich situation with the blood. That makes the most sense. I love seeing people find uses for that new uh, 3D mechanic in Uni 2. That roll that they added. Mm, creeping allowing, edge. What a yeah, great move. An extra little layer of defensive opportunities to combat these Carmine setups. Yeah, having creeping edge really just made the game even more mobile than it already was. That was a really nice hit with the overhead from Yokonibo. Gonna move all the way into the corner here. We've seen this setup before. New, no, he missed. Even, even though we thought it was going to work out, it did not work out. And now it's Tom Clancy's turn again. And that is kind of detrimental to Yokonibo's health pool. When you're playing a, car a character as frail as Carmine, anytime you let your opponent get on the offensive, things can be dire, especially when they have 200 meter to cash out with here at the end of the round. It's not quite gonna kill, but Tom Clancy on the verge of taking the set. Yeah, you can even need to be really careful. That's a really good start, though. If he can end this in a way that he could steal back some of the health from Tom Clancy, it could completely change his Carmine with no health is the scariest place to be because he can use any of his moves freely, and you saw that there at the very end. Watching that one, Alex, staying alive in it. 
utilizing that state where you know you have no more health left to give so i'm just gonna use the, as many tools as i can possibly toss out it was a good counter hit i like the aggression coming in from tom clancy keep this going god Saruki is such a cool character <laughs> Uh, okay, that wasn't a totally real combo could have checked out of it, doesn't matter, but the overhead, the assertiveness at which both players are finding the places where to put their combos is really, really quite excellent. 4.4k on the table there, but the chain shift, it allowed uh, Tom Clancy to see what was coming in, but everything is blocked! I, I definitely like the idea on the chain shift, hoping to catch Yokaniko in the startup of a move, maybe able to reverse a lot of there, but forced to block, ate the overhead, and like mm -hmm. the orbiter setups and things allow him to be so oppressive. It really does. And, you know, Nanase uh, getting that disc in this version of the game added some new pressure into her strings and her combos as well. But there you go already, toast with the black orbiter. Yeah, there it is. And I liked seeing the new force function represented already as well. To delete those fireballs from Nanase, stopping her from just being able to throw him down and follow for the approach. Okay, Orbiter and setup and coming in now. Okay, Nanase on the other side and using chain shift to make sure that she could see what uh, Willard, or to see what Toast was about to do. Getting pressure started, the first significant hit of the game, despite the fact that we've been going on for a little bit of time here. Into the corner. Now, Nanase can really utilize the corner well because of the angles that a lot of her wind and tornadoes come out. But first the second saddle, and now we get all the hits. Black Orbiter, they really made the main character this good. <laughs> He's so tight, and oh, you thought the, the right corner was cool? I'll show you someplace much nicer. We're going all the way coast to coast, but Willard H. Wright does not want to stay there. I'm showing you back where you came from. Right corner it is. And we're back. I do really, I, I want to point out Toast's shielding there. The alternation between the blue shield and the green shield, and he's going to hit Celestial on this grid cycle, which is going to be pretty devastating to... Uh, Will it H right because there's that 20% damage increase. However, Toast did decide to go ahead and chain shift it, get that 200 EXS, didn't work out, goes ahead and uses the ambiguousness of that for a grab and throw into the corner. You like this corner? I too like this corner. Eight seconds remaining though. Any chip damage is gonna mean so much at this point. Toast barely has a life lead. Ah! Tries with the sword card, doesn't oh, hit the no, Toast tech. has it. Toast has it. But that was nail biter you know timeouts used to happen all the time in st and clear and we don't see them as much in uni too but they still happen they still do periodically and what what we were really set up for in that last round was after toast cs the way to get rid of the celestial so early they were able to fill up their meter you know as you get meter proportional to how much grid you use in the CS, and they kept just piling on EX after EX, and on the hide, those do so much chip damage, allowed him to get the health lead and get that timeout win. Excellent stuff there from Toast. Really showing off the power of the protagonist, and, and Hyde really is a cool protagonist. I I like him as a character a lot, and I like him as his moveset really quite a bit. It's very versatile. For a character that you would expect to be your traditional Shoto style character, he does have a lot more versatility, especially with some of the things that you pointed out. But we do have a grid break on this, and this could be with the way that we have the grid going in Toast's favor. Another celestial note, there was a backdash, he lost it. That's a shame. Not quite, but still managing to keep the cycle at all is such a big win for Toast. You're keeping Willard Age right in this corner, able to use that CS to keep the pressure up. Oh, first to winning another one. Yeah. Oh, there? Okay, the low coming out there for Willard H. Wright. Pushing across the screen. Ooh, didn't quite connect on the end of that combo, but a really nice chain shift after the follow-up to Black Orbiter with. Then we got the lasers. The EX version of that does get a little bit of a laser follow-up afterwards. And just more pressure, more pressure spent. All of the meter did toast. 
so willing to keep up these C orbiters to get those plus frames and press any advantage they can. Every time Toasta makes Will and H right block, that's more and more chip damage racking up, more and more pressure that is being put on this Nanase to do something. That was interesting. There's a nice little ambiguous jump there coming out of Willard H. Right. It could have allowed Toast a chance to get in, but not quite. Back dashing left and right here. Back dashes can be particularly risky because it does, if you're not blocking, allow the other player to get some damage out. But Willard H. Right is now opening up Toast. Did win the grid cycle as well. Overhead missing. Toast able to get a reversal out of there, but it's unfortunately for them, that doesn't mean they're scot free as Will and H right still continues to press the offensive. The H is. Yeah, interesting. Oh, but that counter with the invincibility afterwards. This is a big setup for Toast. 200 EXS on the side of them. And just pressure after pressure string. Good lord, Willard H. Wright has to sit here and block. And if they block incorrectly, they are absolutely done for. They did win the cycle immediately CS so that they could see what was happening and to get that um, extra 100 EXS so that they could do an um, EX move if they wanted to. But I don't know if they're going to get the chance depending on how Toast chooses to end this. <gasps> there, the change shift. What do we get? Oh! Good Bye. stuff from Toast but something like that's really aggressive. Watch right before the grid circle hits the timer. You're gonna see people make crucial game decisions right there because you can get a damage buff or you can, you know, go ahead and chain shift to get that EXS. Very important thing to be looking at, but now we're gonna be taking a look here at star underscore and bolt struck. There's Brown Star dash block trying to feel each other out off the rip. No one committing to anything too heavy to start out, and I like that. Start out slow, get a mm -hmm. feel for each other's pace. Bolt right, and oh, right boy. there, what happened? Bolt struck right before the grid cycle ended, went ahead and made their first move. That first grid cycle where you can start asserting your own dominance on the match, very important. And we saw the, the benefit that Bolt struck reaped off of it, able to not get a successful mix-up, but get a mix-up attempt with that chain shift that we saw in the middle of the block thing. Oh, they went overhead, so they got in the air, used the chain shift to try and set something up. That's the reward you get for winning the cycle. Mm -hmm. Star stuck in the corner, and ooh, stuck out a low there with the Gordo and was punished for it. I'm surprised that Bullstruck didn't get a little bit more than there. Once again, just dot boot kick you across the screen. I thought I Grand Blue was over. I love the changes they made to Guard Thrust in this game. In previous games, it used to be super expensive resource. It would grid break you if you didn't have Vorpal, and it also right. cost 100 meter, I believe. In this game, it does not grid break you, and you're able to use it much more liberally, like Star Underscore did just there. Thank you all so much for continuing to redeem those codes, by the way, as we see those pop up. But Bolt's are doing a really great job maintaining the pressure here in this second round of the first game. Oh no, Star Underscore getting a GameStop trade. Bolt's truck able to combo off of it. What? Didn't get too much. Able to fight their way out the command grab. Backdashed Ooh. away from Bolt's truck. Was ready with the response. And will reap the rewards as they take game one. I, I really like that movement decision from Bolt Struck because that was, once again, highlighting one of the two optimal ranges for Gordo, which is that close range with the command grab, and Bolt Struck could sniff it out and just immediately went backwards, which just dismantled Star Underscore's game plan. Now, one thing that having watched Star play a lot is that they will sometimes take a little bit of a slower first game to adapt to the second game. So let's see what adaptations happen here. Unfortunately, went in for a slide, which has a lot of recovery, and Bolt Struck is going to be able to get a really decently sized opening combo here. Hammering away at Star's guard in the corner, trying to shield for dear life, but Bolt Struck leaving just a large enough gap to allow themselves an opportunity for a grid break throw. The pressure continues to mount. We set up the disc for Oki. It's up blocked. Out of the woods. Yeah, that's doing a really great job, like I mentioned previously, with their pressure. Star now incorporating some of these backdashes, trying to get at 
either of the optimal ranges for Gordo, but they're really not able to find anything significant, whereas Bolt struck three touches dead. Voltstruck's been doing a very good job of operating in their optimal range, being in that box between the two spaces that Gordo is trying to be at. With these like 5B, 5C kind of ranges that Nanase can box out Gordo, you know, get past his farther button or his faster buttons, but not quite be in range of the slow, longer buttons. Now we're finally starting to see some of the power that we highlighted with uh, Star Underscore. Good blocking there out of Bolt Struck, though. Doing a really good job demonstrating one of the main rules of Uni. Block low, react high. Absolutely, and challenging when it was prudent to do so. Bolt Struck has been so clinical, this whole set, of just choosing the correct moment. Pays off for them in spades every time. It really does. I like using that disc too as well, the EX version, since it does, you know, come back to you, creates a sanded situation. And Star does have Celestial here, choosing not to consume any of it because you do have that 20% damage increase. And does there, just because the grid cycle was about to end, you do have 200 EX, that's the overhead is going to open this up. Star could really make something happen here. Also won the next Vorpal Cycle. The next one got the chain shift as well. Has 200 meter on deck if Star wants to try something cheeky. That's done a very good job of operating just outside of that command grab range and finds the hit on Star Underscore's attempt to challenge out. Lead to a 2 0 for Bolt Struck. We have no time for that though, because we're getting into Defiant versus the real Tom Clancy. Defiant, as we mentioned earlier, no stranger to any top eight. Probably, I would say, since Frosty Faustings, which they mm -hmm. won. <laughs> They've so just been here. on such an insane tear since Frosty Faustings, like you mentioned. You can't go a single under-night tournament without seeing Defiant in you know, top eight at the very least. More, more often than not, like top three, top four. Or top one. Yeah. It depends. Uh, depends on who's entering, but we have so Ku um, little, excuse me, Kuan into Tsurugi, which, you know, if Kuan is doing everything in their power that they're supposed to, Tsurugi's never gonna get close enough to do anything that's appropriate. Yep, there we go. We got the EX wheel, Defiant showing you if you want to learn what you need. Oh my God, sorry, they just stared at each other, stared and then into a throw. Rude. I like it. It's already working on perfect, and like you were saying, you can't get anywhere close to this tool. They're just standing full screen and trying the 6-6-B, but it didn't catch. Okay, so not a perfect anymore. We did get one throw in from Real Tom Clancy. Now using the armor that Kulon, or that Tsurugi does have to break through some of the defenses of Defiant. Uh, yeah, throw there. That is actually a little bit easier to tech, but didn't quite make the window. The overhead does come in. Tom Clancy takes it all the way back. The League, thank you so much for the subscription. Welcome to TNS. I'm glad she just ran that back the whole length of the match down to a pixel and still had the tenacity to stay calm, stay reserved, find the openings when they were prudent, and 2C again, continuing to put in work with the guard board. Yeah, I was going to say, speaking of finding openings, that was it. Then we're using the flash kick there from uh, Kuan to be able to take back the pressure. I love using the F, the force function there to go ahead and fly. Um, so Kuan's force function will put him into the air and have a little hover state. It's got a lot of different follow-ups, and Defiant's doing a great job using some of those here. We got a multiple counter. Who's going to recover first mentally? It seems to be Defiant. Continue that pressure. I love the guard thrust from Real Tom Clancy. Just avoid the flight high versus empty flight low mix up situation entirely. Get Kuan back to mid range where you want him and can get in fast. There we are back in the corner. Good blocks from Defiant, but unfortunately, 
enough. No, and then you're going to go ahead and use that 3C slide, which is a really great thing for Kuon. And then go ahead and use your enter, Ender, and then get your EX wheel. What's your overhead option? Oh, oh I like using... Oh, I really like the use of the 6C, which is that um, horizontal-looking disc. And then, okay, that didn't work. Okay, we're going to go straight into 2-2-P. To keep up that space, the 6C pushes them back quite a distance, straight into the pillar. Again, these lasers from Defiant finding purchase. Real Tom Clancy bail off immediately? Interesting choice, but I see... I can see why, because you're going to go ahead and get that VO. And, or, I'm sorry, not VO, I was thinking of something at the IW. Mm -hmm. And, um... Yep, going to a fly there. I mean, that was just so much damage. And in addition to the damage that you had by using the IW, you were able to, you know, establish your spacing again, get your neutral going, um, because Kuan neutral is the whole screen. We talked about characters' optimal ranges in the previous match when Star and Discord's Gordo was on screen. Right. This character, Kuan, has very few where he feels like he has no tools. At full screen, you have lasers. Mid range, he has quite competent buttons. The pillars, the A laser that only goes like a little bit of the screen. It controls so much of the space. It can be hard to find a range that you're like, oh, this is where I want to be against Kuon. Uh, you don't want to be anywhere. You, wh where do you want to be against Kuon in a different game? Uh, but well, here, I want to be on the windscreen. Yeah, I mean, that would be preferable, but we'll see what happens. I mean, even like Kuon's 2B has a surprisingly large hitbox. And there we're going to get this pressure started again using the wheel and then the air combo immediately afterwards. And you get that wall bounce and you can immediately use your um, 623B, which is your DP motion B, that can teleport you forward and then continue your combo. It's disgusting. It allows him to convert from nearly any hit anywhere on the screen and stabilize very well. Things I quite like about the character. Cancel the slide in the EX. Real time, quite doing a very good job of blocking the mix up shielding as well to give themselves quite a weak grid. That was some really nice. Really, really nice choices made there on the side of Real Tom Clancy. The overhead too with the bounce and you're gonna need the EXS. It's gonna get a good combo extension into the corner. Well, there was a recovery though from Defiant, which means he's not out of it yet. There was a green shield, had a tiny bit of gain on the grid there, and that actually caused him to win the Vorpal Cycle, which was pretty important. He has to get out of dodge real time. Clancy trying to use, I believe, the 236C to arbor through the wheel, but didn't quite get it. Tried to challenge on Wake Up, and Defiant was covering the options. Well done, Defiant. So as opposite of the first round that we saw, uh, where Tom Clancy made it all the way back, that time Defiant took it all the way back to where they were, putting himself one round away from progressing into the winner's finals. Doing a very good job of changing up the pressure strings, keeping Tom Clancy on their toes, the veil off to get out of the situation immediately and able to continue the pressure of those 2 through 6 Cs. Yeah, the gold throw that you're able to take against uh, Tsurugi is so massive. You just have all the time in the world to be like, oh, I'm being grabbed, now I throw. Getting those pillars coming out from Defiant and then able to catch the DP coming out from real Tom Clancy, something that got him in trouble in the first time that we saw him here on stream at DNS. We're going to get the wheel coming out as well with the 6 6 knockdown. Clancy, no stranger to being in these 1 HP situations again def against Defiance Kuon and has run them back before. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's definitely not out of it. He just has to be able to make sure that he's making good decisions. Unfortunately, a counter hit, just a counter hit, is what's going to be able to take that there. ...into Toast versus Bolt Struck, which is mean, which means that... Toast will be facing his second Nana say, at, at least his second Nana say in this bracket that we've seen so far, but a different one in that of Bolstra. You kind of wonder whether that's like a, a positive or a negative for Toast, honestly. Because while sure you're fighting the same character twice, two players can have so ridiculously different takes on that character that there's a chance you, you go into it thinking, oh, this is going to play out similarly. similarly to the last one, and then it's something you don't expect. No, not at all, but actually it looks like the Toast was taking a lot of the confidence from their previous win into this, 
but Bolt Struck once again sitting on the Celestial getting that 20% damage increase and pressuring Toast into the corner. Oh, there was that um, creeping edge that you had so expertly pointed out earlier, Pineapples, that Toast used to get out of the corner, escape the pressure, and is now able to apply pressure of their own. I love that immediately from Bullstruck. Use the chain shift, which gives you meter proportional to how many blocks of grid you had, and immediately spend EX. You'll get it refunded back afterwards to try and get that pressure. Fortunately for them, it didn't quite work out as Toast is able to turn the tables as swiftly as they were put, to, to put on him. Well, that was something that Toast demonstrated earlier that they were pretty expert at doing. Oh, that time, Bullstruck went in for a grab, but Toast had gone ahead and backdashed, whether out of self-preservation or instinct, and this is going to allow them to get a 3.9k hit with a little bit of that extra bonus damage on top of it. Chain Shift does come out, and now we're going to get this big pogo corner pressure with the low to come out. Black Orbiter once again for a second, third. Oh, you're dead! Hyde is one of those characters where if if you let him get a solid hit on you, you're expecting to look at that damage counter and see 3.7k, 4k, depending on if it feels like spending meter. Yeah, and that's the thing in, I would say, pretty consistently across French bread games. On average, your higher level player is going to be able to kill you in three hits. Hmm. Two, if you spend meter and you do a lot of damage. But once again, we had a backdash coming out from Toast, and the overhead uh, is going to get a grid break for Boltstruck because Boltstruck was holding shield and unfortunate for them because it was a really important opening interaction for Toast. Toast doing a phenomenal job of running up, getting the backdash to assess the situation, and then responding accordingly. Goodness, the challenges from Toast. Talking about it earlier, they're just finding their moments, the gaps in Bl Boltstruck's offense, but just as soon as I say that, Boltstruck doing the same back. And it's the mark of a really good player is the adaptability, and we saw that right in those last five seconds, I would say, from Boltstruck, where they were able to open up, wake up with that EX move, and then slide underneath during the animation while Hyde was spinning in the air and continue that over. But Toast is not taking no for an answer and has brought Boltstruck into the corner with a throw, gets the combo off of the wall bounce. He's going to be able to get the... Oh, the Pogo EX with a hard knockdown. Nice stuff. I definitely like that as well. You know, you got a whole stick of meter. It's not doing you any favors. You can't be building more cash when you're capped out. I like the spend from Toast there to just you drop a little bit of the resources and make it work for you. You get the 200 Ooh. back at the end of this combo, enough for the IW 5k for your troubles. What troubles? You have no troubles, you're dead. There are zero troubles. All right, so Toast has to be... I was gonna say they had to be aware of when this came back, but because not unless they got hit, the disc uh, disappeared because it acts as a projectile. And now... Just, you know, playing around in neutral, trying to see what the other one is doing. Toast doing these backdashes a lot. If Boltstruck wants to get some damage out, they're going to start capitalizing on the fact that Toast is doing those backdashes there. That time just opens up the luck. Yeah, we saw once right there where Boltstruck threw out a low to try and call out those backdashes from Toast that you pointed, but got the hit and weren't quite able to capitalize off of it. This hit, though, they are capitalizing off of in the fullest. You got the Oki with the fireball. You've run them all the way back to the corner. Has CS in the mix-up. Yeah, nice attack on the throw. Then just as easy as that, Toast walks out of the corner and puts Boltstruck in the same position they were in moments ago. The oh, wow! That was very high-risk, high-reward from Boltstruck. The life lead made that, you know, DP to get out of less risky. But if Boltstruck had whiffed that, with the way that Toast has been playing, absolutely would have died. Oh, 100%. We've seen the damage that Hyde has been churning out. Won the first round of that uh, that game, too, off of a 5k combo. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, uh, Toast's roots are there. They are ready. Boltstruck could very well have died. And I like the, the representation of the reversal. It's something that we've seen very rarely in the top eight or top eight qualifiers thus far. And you, know, you just kind of bust it out once in a while. It's 
Sure, well, I feel like a lot of the times in many situations, the reversals, especially for characters like Nanase, which doesn't have a lot of horizontal, is primarily vertical in nature, can be punished really easily, so you have to be careful when you throw it out. But when you do, and it's done expertly, just like the combo that Bolt Struck is doing right now with the grid break on top of it, works very well and adds to the mental stack of your opponent. Indeed it does. Posts on backing, shielding for dear life, not able to get out of the corner, but I don't seem too, uh, too, uh, hesitant. Oh, you know, DP in their face, just like that. Just like that today, on Saturday. Saturday, the 6th of April, here at TNS. Ooh, chain shift reversal, the disc just came back, but Toast is blocking, so good for them. Tech hit once again, and another! Another reversal to end it. Bolstruck has to be careful because I think Toast might be catching on. Oh my goodness. Imagine you're Toast in that round. You sat in this corner for nearly 40 seconds, blocked like 15 mix ups. Oh, finally, I can try and get out, and Bolstruck denies it at all opportunities. Getting a big chunk of Nanose's life gone to Toast. It was an EX that came out from Boltstruck, and although it wasn't any damage, it was the good position for Boltstruck. Now being able to use that whole mid-screen, once again, did it from the sky with that little dive kick, and now is able to catch Toast Toes as they were jumping in the air, and going to be able to start this combo. Toast trying to air to air, unfortunately not quite in range. Great tech on the throw, so tricky was that setup. Post going for a very greedy force function, attempting to get the hit. Reversal from Boltstruck, just say! I said Toast is catching on, and what did Boltstruck do? The thing that won him the past two rounds, but Toast caught on. He learned. He is now buttered Toast. He is ready to go. So fortunate for Boltstruck that the Veil Off had just run out before Toast got that reversal punish. Otherwise, it would have been so much deadlier. Up Grand Blue, which was spectacular if you didn't watch that. And now we've got some good Uni 2. So we are going to get the Gordo into the Nanase here as, we, as we're going to have to say goodbye to our first player on stream. I don't know who it is, but we're going to say goodbye to somebody. Somebody will be exiting. Star underscore are gonna have to fight the second Nanase of the night, much like Toast did in our last set. Both having to go through Willard H right and Bolt Struck in this uh, top eight or top eight qualifier. And Star underscore already starting off hot in the matchup with a grid break throw. I like the way that we're seeing so much more assertive decision making coming out of Star, where we didn't really get to see him shine in the previous game that we saw on screen. Good tech coming out from Willard H. Right, however, the chain shift was absolutely crucial there from Star Underscore being able to maintain the pressure, go into a grab, and then complete a combo after that throw. One of those big changes from not this version of the game, but the last version was adding that red mist into chain shift if your opponent is in the middle of an, an action and can't block it, they're a little highlighted in red, which allows for these very quick decisions of, oh, I change it, I see the red, I can reverse it and take my turn back. Oh, I love the slide coming in there from Star, taking that first game pretty expeditiously, getting great combos here. We got the Vorpal and the Invincibility. However, Nanase going straight for your knees. She's pretty short compared to Gordo, and she's going to cut you off. And just slapping the toes as Gordo missed the slide, unfortunately. Star tries to get out, trying to air stall a little bit with the J214, but to no avail as Will and H right has gotten a hit and has got the quarter situation. Can you block the mix up? Nice chain shift to continue the pressure. I like the way that he's oh we'll come back to that later. So Star stuck out that big boot. That got him killed in the previous game that we saw him on stream, too. Because great button if it works, if it doesn't work, recovery is massive on that move. So Willard H. Wright was able to take the round and now gets a grid break throw. Really great stuff for the opening of round three here. Well, yeah, you get to start off the round. You have a half of the grid bar in your tank. You know, when you, Whenever you chain shift, you're gonna get so much meter back. You guarantee that your opponent is not winning it one cycle, will probably not win the next cycle either just because of the lead you've accrued. And the pressure does not stop from Nana say once she gets going. Like we were talking about earlier, you have to block this character once, you're gonna be here for a while. 
Mm -hmm. Oh, I I get the idea from Star. Star was just using a jump to you to get out of the corner to get over Willard H right, but the disc came back and caught him on the way out. Oh, uh, you think he can run? Nope. You think you think he can get away from she me from my shoes. disc? She's got wings on her shoes. She's getting you. She's also got like an iPhone too. She's gonna call her mom, pick her up from the mall, and she's gonna catch you. She said, "Hey, mom, I'll be done in like two minutes. Can you come pick me up real quick? Just real fast. Just real fast." Plus frames, two, two, eight. Keeping Willard H right locked down in the corner. I like that from Star. Like you mentioned earlier, being so much more assertive on the offense in this set from what we saw in Winners. Whatever Star gets has gotten a sequence going, and they've not let it go by any means. No, but unfortunately, sometimes you're forced to let go. And Willard H. Wright is showing you exactly how they're going to do that. Love the setup with the diagonal disc from the air there. Okay, counter hit from Star Underscore using what I believe was a 3C to go ahead and get the uh, anti-air coming out. And good lord. You didn't need to hit her that many times, Gordo. Oh. Insult to injury. And I will also love the new the use of the new force function in that yes. combo from Gordo. That little move where he kind of leaps off the ground a little bit, mm -hmm. giving him some extra room for his mid-screen combos. I felt bad for Nano say it's like you wanted to see the top of the screen. Bye girl! There she goes. But now look at how much of the grid that Star was getting there. Uh, Cycle did go in Willard H. Wright's favor and is doing a great job using the meter, getting... Yet yeah, I was going to say they were right before the cycle. They knew they were going to lose it, so they went ahead and used that change shift so they could get as much EXS as they could. Throw. What's the setup here? Using that same diagonal setup from the air. And once again, this just stagger pressure is so important. Oh my goodness, Star just re bust out with an overhead 6B to challenge? Oh, they try not see that one coming in. Oh, he got shimmied, but no confirm! Star has had a couple crucial opportunities, but the combo hasn't quite been able to finish. The punish on the rusty nail from mid screen whiffs on crouching Willard H. Wright, so aware of the situation and ready for the punish. I love it. That was great stuff. Willard H. Wright is really showing off here today, and I like that so much. It's great to be able to have spectacular, flashy gameplay here at TNS. That's what we're here for. Ooh, what an ambiguous throw. I wasn't ready for it either. I got thrown, but the veil off is going to be able to reestablish some pressure for star underscore. See what they can do with it. Jump over again. I, the jumps are really scary to me, especially since they got him killed. But it seems a little bit scrambly from Star. And now Willard with the throw on the opposite side into the corner. They weren't even that far away from the corner. Gonna be able to establish that stagger pressure once again. Chain shift for 200 EXS. But Celestial on the side of Star. Immediately opts to spend it was scouting out something from Willard H. Wright that did not come. They just kept blocking, kept their turn, and found a hit off the back of it. Yeah, spend one meter, get the corner situation, bait a veil off, and take the set. It's the individuality of a player by highlighting the moves that they choose to use with the same character against somebody else. We will make it a point to tell you which person is playing which colors so that it's a little bit less visually confusing. So on one side, we have Calamity with the yellow Carmine, and then we have Yokinigbo with the red and black Carmine. And thank you to our amazing production who's already ma 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 marked that for you. Blech, I'm too hype, I miss my words. But Yokinigbo, <laughs> what an opener. It's been like 10 seconds, my guy. And we get the crystal. You talked about how you wanted to see the setups. You're going to get some more. Two bombs set. You get two mix-up opportunities. Both already spent, though, and Calamity doesn't bite on the mix-ups, able to start their own offense in the corner. Are we going to go into the same thing? Yes, we are. Wonderful. Ooh, I really like the colors of the yellow that turns out with the blood in that crystal. It's really pretty. 
But I don't have time to remark on the fantastic color and art design of Uni 2, which is spectacular. Shout out to Kamine for all of those great life decisions. The DP is going to whip, and that is most likely going to be the end of Yoki Nigbo. I liked the idea, but execution was subpar. Had a very strong start. Was able to put Calamity in the corner very early and tack on a massive health lead right out the gate. But once mm -hmm. Calamity was able to navigate those situations, get out of the corner, they able to catch Yokonigbo trying to challenge in inopportune spots time and time again, just like that. Really great stuff here from Calamity, feeling themselves after that win that they pretty much stole out of the hands of Yokonigbo. Corner pressure is so potent right now. Yeah, they get the chain shift to 200 EXS. You're gonna spend it or you're gonna hold it? Right now, gonna hold it as Yoki Ningbo is working their way out of the corner. Calamity doing a great job just sending across the projectile and the blood puddle had splashed and that was the end of that. Good stuff, Calamity. Back up, toss a quick 6B, collect game one. Wonderful. You're talking about watching mirror matches and uh, as a player, I always feel like mirror match is a little bit cursed. But as a spectator, mm -hmm. I love watching it. You can see the stark differences in how these two play. Calamity right? on defense have been so reserved and so calculating in how they want to get out. Or Yoko Nibo has been playing a lot more actively and trying to get out of the situations. I completely agree with that assessment, Pineapples. That was really expertly said. And now we are seeing there's a brief creeping edge in there, which is going to give Calamity the advantage. Slid him all the way over to put Yokonigbo in the side of the corner, which, once again, like we said, Carmine does a really great job because of the high-low mix, especially with the blood puddles. You're cutting off an avenue of approach. Yokonigbo's dead. Calamity, in a swift fashion, is one away from moving on and putting Yokonigbo into the spectator's bracket, where the rest of us are. Oh my goodness, I love it. Immediately run up air button to bait a throw tech. Can't confirm the cut, but the full combo. My corner now, overhead blocked. Once again, we see the patience from Calamity, and it comes back to bite them this time as this yeah. overhead connects. Try and try again. You get so many opportunities, eventually, one's gonna work. Yeah, so speaking of overheads, okay. What was interesting there is that Calamity was actually really setting up at the end for this round because they were able to maintain that 200 EXS. They went ahead and chain shifted so they could absorb any of the remaining meter. But Yogi Nigbo weakly is turning the tide on this and gets a grid break. That was so ambiguous. There's so many projectiles on screen. It was difficult to see. I love the change up in there offense that time so many times before they've been going for that charged overhead this time they just did a quick partial charge into a low to catch calamity wanting to block high i think that's really good though there was great adjustments on the side of yoki Nigbo, in particular in that very last exchange and this was something that if you haven't been paying attention to the sound cues of uni which are i mean all french bread games i feel like have the best sound cues because it's so, they're so distinct and they tell you a very, very uh, great story that there was a chain shift and then there was another chain shift on the other side, which just meant brief freeze, brief freeze. I see what you're doing and Yoko Nebo capitalized. It was great, very smart. It was, and we're gonna see a very different dynamic in this game three though. It's Calamity switching off the Carmine, getting away from the mirror and onto Hilda. You know, I am mad. So Hilda, is similarly to Carmine, is very good at cutting off one of your avenues of approach, either ground or air, and sometimes she's gonna do it at the same time. We're in Celestial now, and goes ahead right before that cycle was gonna keep rotating, does so much damage. Oof, this is a big change for Yokonikbo to adjust to. Calamity just set up such a ridiculously difficult situation to block. They threw out that little tracking projectile on the ground, uh, d threw something out, chain shift so they can approach behind it, and made you block the 
This is really tense. So Hilda is there. I was going to say, can put out projectiles behind as well. Yokonigbo doing a great job blocking it, but then you're going to have the force function coming out, which is going to open up Yokonigbo here. Calamity working on a perfect. Gosh, he's got to be so careful. Oh, that was so mean. Overhead, overhead into a low. Then just. What was that? CVO? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so. Ouch. Yeah, that CVO. It's for the extra little style points at the end oh, of the set. Oh, styling and profiling for your generosity. We really appreciate it. Oh, we do indeed. Thank you very much. Give these players a little bit more, uh, a little bit more sugar in the pot. A little we, bit more. We we, we stack in the fridge. Of We're course. filling the fridge, as they say over on Wanted. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Shout outs to the good. EU EU guys. They're the best. They're one of them. Oh, I've been holding it down for so many games over there. All right, well, it's right. Starting out, just sweep to catch Tom Clancy walking back and able to get the quarter positioning, but not for long. We are playing active defense in this game. We really are. So there's, so Thanatos, I feel like it's going to be a little bit harder to see just because of the color palette. Um, sometimes it's very metallic, and this is not the case with this particular Oreo. Oreo, I call her Oreo all the time. So Oreo color palette. Um, yeah, there's that throw that comes out from Tsurugi that has an extremely long gold tech window. Gold techs, or gold techs on a gold throw are longer than your traditional tech window in uni, and we were seeing it there. However, as much headway as Willard H. Wright made, real Tom Clancy is trying to bring it back, and with a throw and some high heels to your nose, Willard H. Wright takes the first one. I love that. Very few players expect they do something minus on block and you just run up and toss them. I love players that do it. that periodically. Nobody expects a Spanish in a position, and by that I mean run up throw. Oh my goodness, sweet. Waiting just long enough for Tom Clancy to feel like they wanted to take their turn back. And, oh, you got a quick 4k for it? Oh, yeah, just a, a smooth 4k, but... You know, we're gonna work through it now. All right, so the overhead shield does work, and then the veil off immediately afterwards. Um, Willard H. Wright was able to tech out of that, and but unfortunately does get hit again. Tom Clancy once again, after what seemed like quite the defeat, answering back in kind, making this first game 1-1. As soon as that first hit after the veil off connected, I was worried for Willard H. Wright's life. What well, Tsurugi with meter is an absolutely demonic character. That 236C giving him guard point plus frames from nearly anywhere on screen. Like, trying to challenge this character is so difficult. Willard H. Wright playing very well, but getting tossed out of the corner. Mm -hmm. Some low. Very nicely done. Gets the follow up, but. Oh, yeah, using that EX reversal. Good stuff there from Tom Clancy. He does whip, though. Willard H. Wright still sitting, winning that vocal cycle, and is going to be able to win the first game. It was good stuff. I'm, I'm enjoying seeing. I'm enjoying seeing the similarity in game plan from the Nanase to this, but um, I think the change to Ori having that additional like half character and the ability to control more of the screen is paying off really well. Now, Nanase can do that, but I think Ori does a better job. And so Tom Clancy's having a little bit of a hard time. Oh, they were trying to get more blocks of grid and then they were stuck in recovery. And so now you got to eat all this damage, which unfortunately might be your entire life bar, friend. Not quite Tom Clancy gets one more shot. But you mentioned before the game started the benefits of switching to this rapier character, having a much stronger control of the neutral. We've been seeing Willard H. Wright get a huge amount of whiff punishes on Tom Clancy trying to press buttons in the mid-range. Punishes as well, just raw off that force punch. You can see a quick sweep there. You're letting those dash straight to rock, getting so many hits, so many opportunities with it. Yeah, and once again, oh, and once again, once again, trying to use that reversal, and it's not working out for Tom Clancy. That's the thing that got them in trouble in the very first round that we saw. But we're getting into a toast and calamity, so hide and Carmine, hide the edgiest. But Carmine's slightly edgier. I don't know, there's just like, 
I love how singularly minded Hyde is on like, I'm gonna do the thing, and then Carmine's like, I'm so edgy! And he's actually like really not, because he thinks he's spending his own blood, but he isn't, and it's just really funny. The I whole... cannot, I, I have not been able to take Carmine seriously since one of my friends told me that little tidbit of lore. Oh, it's, it's not... so funny, because you think, oh my god, he's spending his own blood, that's so, wow, no, nah, he just thinks he is, he's just, he a little bit stupid, it's okay, we love him anyway. <laughs> Oh, and there, once again, so, uh, that was Calamity trying to use the Creeping Edge to get out of the corner, didn't quite have enough space, and Toast is able to capitalize on that situation, getting a big, big combo here in the corner. Does he want to spend meter two? You know, IW, that's just, that's mean, that was almost 5.3k, you didn't have to be like that. But he was. It was just on the edge where I would understand being unsure if spending one bar would, would do the trick, and I always... Always am a fan of, even if it's a little bit overkill, spend the resources that you know are gonna make the round yours. I, I agree, it's very true. And you might as well, especially because, you know, if you're not keeping track of your scaling, which a lot of people are, that it can happen. Now, in that case, so Calamity was trying to go for the move that would get him health back, it would allow him to keep going, but Toast? expertly backdashed out of the situation, kind of sniffed it out, and was able to take that first game very quickly. Good stuff from Toast. Just clean, clean gameplay. Super convincing. Very reminiscent of I mean, the style that we've seen earlier in the tournament. We saw Toast be surgical in all of the previous matches. You know, maybe a little bit shaky against Boltstruck, but with that one exception, Every match they've played has just been a clinic in Hyde gameplay. It has. I think it's been an excellent thing to watch, but I would love to see Calamity make some adjustments here. Oh, be careful. Okay, he was fine. Uh, so that, when they lean back like that and they have the blue semi translucent sparkles around them, that means they're trying to gain grid. Trying to win that grid cycle, you know, there's so many advantageous things that we've been talking about with that. But if you're not careful and you let go of the button, you can't act immediately. You have to be really careful. Yeah, I mean, Calamity was doing a decent job of setting up for it by just like throwing down a puddle in the mid range. So, that, oh, if, if Toast tries to run up on them, they have an extra line of defense. Uh, but yeah, still, you know, very vulnerable on that. Toast finally able to get their way in. Celestial spent by Calamity, and Toast is not afraid to challenge immediately. No blocking like an expert. Toast doing a great job. Calamity does get a little throw. <clears throat> Toast doesn't care. The throw afterwards in the wall bounce is going to be able to get a combo off of it. There's still blood on the ground, but you gotta be careful. No, you don't have to be careful. I love that Toast tried to go for the chain shift there, but because the round was already over, the chain shift didn't apply, so we didn't get that meter. That's to something to look out for in the future if you play. Mm -hmm. A little bit of extra credit on the, uh, the end of the round, get that extra meter. Calamity, though, gonna be the one with the meter and the health lead here. Set down the two puddles, you get two mix-up opportunities. What's it gonna be? Oh, it's going to be a tech out of the corner. Okay, was hit by the projectile coming out forward from Calamity. Worked out well. So it's 1-1 one, one in this round, and the sweep for Toast is going to be able to get the initial bit of damage out here. Okay, tech into the corner. Now what are we going to do? Ooh, the DP didn't quite work out for Calamity. I like that. Chain shift assess the situation. He gets it from the cells, but both players have been so on the ball for challenging with the A buttons. Neither of them letting a single uh, opening pass. Alright, Black Orbiter coming out there. Oh, and just a throw. The So, I mean, I know that there's always a specific tech window on great Kuon play that we're not going to see here because Defiant plays who Defiant wants to play. And we're gonna now get Hyde into Nanase, which is really interesting because Boltstruck has played other Hydes. As a matter of fact, put Toast Hyde into the loser side of the bracket. If I remember correctly, Defiant was primarily a Hyde player in the previous version of the game. 
um, you know, obviously we've seen, you know, nowadays they have as many characters as they want to. They have the Carmine, the Kuon, the Wondrekia, the pretty much it. Yeah, anything you, you can name, they can play it. But Hyde being one of their bread and butter characters uh, from the previous iteration. Right, but I do really like here what we're seeing from Boltstruck. That Boltstruck's defense has been particularly impressive this entire bracket, and we're seeing it here. The block low react high mantra that is key to the defense in uni coming out clutch here and now allowing Boltstruck to begin their own offense as they are setting up a disc, but Defiant not deterred. They might be feeling a little bit of pressure now. Uh, never mind. <laughs> Immediately on a wake up, they saw Bullstruck going for that projectile setup using that new force function that we've seen to great effect. Just delete the projectile, get rid of the threat, and 2 to a challenging and getting the punch, getting the round. Really great stuff here from Defiant. I mean, I, and I appreciate in chat, yeah, Defiant is a high main as much as they now play everyone. I think that's very true. But I think what Defiant does have is extremely clean fundamentals of Uni itself. And we're seeing that now. And if you loved Hyde gameplay that we got to see with Toast, I hope you're loving what we're seeing here. That was such a great way to use the EXS and extend the combo. And okay, Boltstruck was using chain shift to see what was happening. He does manage to switch out of the side with a run under. Good stuff here. What are we gonna get at the end? Yep, we got that little, ooh, creeping edge to get out of the corner. Good stuff. And then just a dash through in from Nanase, but we got the veil off from Defiant. Oh my goodness, the play three C. How Defiant back dash. I love it. Boltstruck able to recompose themselves. Toss the mid screen and the delayed overhead. Oh, Boltstruck, you're so sick. That was great. So, Boltstruck's combo structure is pretty, pretty airtight, I want to say. But what to me is the most impressive is their defense. Their defense is absolutely winning them these games. But we had a chain shift with an invincible reversal from Defiant, who's still sitting on full health with that blue health bar. That's how you know he hasn't taken any damage. Oh, he took damage. I'm sorry. That's on me. That's me. Little tiny bit of chip, but that is nothing compared to the chip that Hyde is able to put out if he gets you blocking. That little, that extra trait to Hyde, he gets chip damage on his normals, he gets extra chip damage on his specials. Yeah, nice stuff here, too. This is probably going to be a solid... Okay, there was a chain shift in there. I was going to say, you could extend it a little bit longer if you wanted to, but the swing is going to prevent Boltstruck from doing anything tricky on the way down. Varying the pressure, and then the Veil Off doesn't connect because Defiant was jumping in the air, once again creating those pressure string situations and not allowing Boltstruck to get a good foothold in. Defiant up one in this winner's final. As a reminder, as is tradition with Undernight Bracket, uh, winners, losers, grands is going to be three out of five, whereas the rest of these are going to be two out of three. So we only have one, two out of three left. This is three out of five, and your mindset totally changes. It, it definitely does. You go from having the, I gotta change things up quick or else I'm out of the set if I lose one more game mentality in the first of two to be like, okay, you know, I can take some time. Maybe that adaptation I tried in the second game didn't work so well. I got one more to really recompose. Order now, press function blocked. Defiant the spending chain shift, keeping up the offensive, keeping the pressure going. Boltstruck, like you mentioned earlier, staying so steady on the defense, but just as I say that, they flinch and Defiant's ready to catch. Mark of a good player is noticing when your opponent makes those tiny mistakes, leaves those small, insignificantly otherwise gaps that you're able to just rip to shreds. And Defiant is doing that expertly, pretty regularly now. And look at the damage that they're able to put out. Two touches so far, and Boltstruck is missing the vast majority of their health. And it's only going to continue to get worse from here. The longer you block hide, the more chip you take. If you try and challenge, you better be confident because Defiant has kept it 
close to the chest and is up 2-0 now. Oh, and honestly, always looks so sad when she sits there like, you bullied me. But canonically, Nanase only wants to beat up Hyde in this iteration of the game. So you can do it, Nanase, I believe, but not if Defiant doesn't let you. Defiant is just on another plane altogether sometimes. You can tell when they are in the zone. And this is looking like one of those brackets. They are just playing so confidently anytime they choose to leave a gap in their pressure to bait out a challenge opportunity. They make it just small enough that they can punish any attempt to get back in. All right, nice invincible reversal there and then a throw on the other side. Do it again. Oh, two is enough. I like three, but you know what? I'll take what I can get. You're going to have the black orbiter and the round's over. I wanted another throw. You get up, have to hold more of these orbiters. Is Defiant already spending 100 meter to continue the pressure? Bullstrucky has been quite acquainted with this left corner in this set. It seems like off of any single interaction, even a neutral interaction where nobody gets hit, they're ending up here somehow. All right, we're getting into this now. And Knuckledoo, thank you so much for the sub. We appreciate your support. Thank you for being here. We love having you here on TNS Saturday night. Just as much as we love all of these ridiculous hide combos. <gasps> From Defiant, that was such a good change shift to stay into the pogo state because he was going to fall. And that would have absolutely lost so much health for Defiant. But it doesn't matter because of that expert change shift. The veil off this time does connect. Doesn't matter. Follow up for Defiant. A clean 3-0 very, very rapidly. Sometimes within the same bracket. Sometimes within the same set, depending on if we're on the losers or winners side. And it's great to see Defiant emerging as one of those players for uni in particular it really is and also it's also great to see dying blades hitting us with the tier one subscription thank you very much for that thank you for joining us here on tampa never sleeps as we're getting into loser semis our last first of two match of the night between toast and willard h Wright. And Willard H. Wright already opening very, very strong. We've seen a lot of hide gameplay tonight. I'm not particularly mad about it. Chain shift because that did not connect with the overhead and he's trying to keep himself safe. The check file coming out, nothing else really happening. We're just sort of trying to find openings in this neutral, and the first really big opening is going to come for Toast. Toast being so aware with the usage of that new force function deleting all projectiles and forcing Willard H. Wright to respect the neutral presence. All right, attack on the throw. Now Toast, yeah, Toast was just sitting there, and you know why? Because they were one block into Willard H. Wright's grid, which meant that they got Celestial. Yep, gonna go ahead and eat all of that, even though there was a bit of an excess, that meant that they got 200 E excess. Gold, tech on the throw there. And then actually now Willard has Celestial, so an exchange of Celestial there, just a lot of power in both players' hands now, and almost identical absorption. And now Toast back in Celestial, we're just trading Celestials now. I don't think I've ever seen this in a game of Wonder Knight. Oh, excuse me, you have 200 meter. No, I have 200 meter. No, you have 200 meter as well. Both of these players having so much cash in their pockets and Toast being the first one to really spend it on reducing the opponent's health bar. CVO to get the extra juggle point into the IW. The timer is counting down. Every point of health oh, okay. matters. But mom, it's my turn to have Celestial! That's really what that whole match felt like. But in the end, Toast is the one who's going to be able to make it out. But to Miller Knight Price credit, they're sitting on that 200 EXS. You can get a lot done with that if you're able to play the video game that you paid for, which you might not be able to given Toast's aggression. I paid $50 for this. They say as they have to hold the double overhead from Toast. Drop a one CS. Oh, they blocked it. Cool. I'll drop another one. Thank you. I'll take game one. And remember, this is the last first of two set of the night. So that game one means extra in terms of momentum. I'm sorry, the comment in chat. Dang, imagine playing. Couldn't be me. That, was good. that one got me. Thank you for that. 
Uh, yeah, I don't think uh, I don't think they did imagine playing. They'd like to. Ooh, that grab was very very risky. In some anime fighters, a a throw attempt is going to scoot you forward. Not an undernight, so you have to be particularly careful. Particularly careful as well about how you structure your offense. Both of these players are leaving opportunities for the opponent to challenge Willard H. Right now able to get the knockdown has the grid in their favor as well. Reversal to go back to neutral and toast the assault that we were talking about earlier in the tournament to go over the low options, paying dividends once again. Really great stuff. Ooh, chain shift. <gasps> Chain Shift EXS doesn't do a lot of damage, but does get Willard H right out of the corner. It doesn't matter though, Toast is so aware of Willard's position on on screen and then gets the throw afterwards to win. Toast trying to speed run this. This is TNS done quick. The any percent run, actually it's the high percent run, let's be real. Toast is, is looking at the remaining bracket path and said, okay, I played Willard H right in the top eight qualifier. I won that one pretty convincingly. I'm trying to make a repeat performance of that. I want to rematch with Boltstruck, who's sitting in losers' finals. Right, and Boltstruck, who also plays Nana say, put Toast into the loser's side 2-1. So, really practicing the Nana say structured defense here. See what else they can do with it, though, as Nana say is making a really good attempt at trying to get stuff. We get the chain shift afterwards. Blocking with a green shield. Got to be careful with those because you could get grid broken. Careful, yeah. You mentioned the green shield happens when you're shielding after already in blocks done. If your opponent recovers fast enough, they can run up and grid break you, maybe like a throw or something. Punishing, but Willard H. Wright able to navigate it, gets a shimmy and has 200 meter if they wish to spend it. Are we gonna opt to take the round or go for Oki? Ooh, we're taking it. I love it. I love it. Well, and I you said, said it, it early. Yeah, yeah, you're about to say what you said earlier. Go ahead, say it. I said it earlier. Anytime that you have the cash and you can spend maybe a little bit extra to make the round yours, you might as well do it. Because what matters at the end of the day is how many counters in that round bar you have, not mu how much meter is in your pocket. Exactly. That is so true. Pineapples, I appreciate that. And also, whoever just typed the uh, Maturino thing, we are out of codes, but if you feel so moved to directly contribute any amount of money, we would appreciate it. Let's fill that bridge for the players here today as we are now filling the grid bar for Willard H. Right. Oh my gosh, this Nanase is so tricky. Filling the grid bar and depleting the health bar as Willard H. Right has toast on life support. The throw tech crucial in maintaining these last couple interactions. Yes, to continue the offense, back the way to the corner. This could be a start of an incident. You have nearly 200 meter and plenty of EXs to work with. Grim Thrust to get off of him, reset the situation, and now start the offensive. Willard H. Right only needs one more hit, but they're not going to find it. No, this is really, really scary. Okay, <gasps> the CVO. <laughs> oh, insult to injury, but beautiful animation. Oh. Bye. The rest of my animation, come back. No. Your general game plan can vary just because you know you're gonna get to play a little bit longer. The mind games can change a lot. You might wanna be a bit more reserved on the things that you have in your back pocket. When do you show certain moves that you're able to vary your gameplay structure and things like that. But in this, I'll be curious because again, last time that we saw Boltstruck versus Toast, which was earlier on in tonight's bracket, Boltstruck did win 2-1. So what adjustments can Toast make? And already it's actually looking fairly similar to game the first. I'll be looking to see how the defense has changed up. In their previous match and winners that you touched on, Toast was doing a lot of down backing and not a whole lot of moving forward. This one, maybe they're seeing a little bit of a change up as they got the challenge the first time around. Now, back down back. I like the back dash to get some extra space. I do too. Okay, there's the Black Orbiter follow up. I love pineapples that you pointed out super early on how important that Black Orbiter and the follow up can be to Hyde's entire game plan. And we're seeing it time and time again, really expertly pointed out so that we could watch that the entire time Hyde was on screen. Anytime he's got 100 meters, toss the follow up, make it safe just like that, keep up the pressure. 
corner. You're out of bar, out of options. Tried to move forward, but Bolt Struck had a fireball waiting for you. Nearly Celestial, the cycle's about to end. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is gonna be Celestial, yep. Anytime that you have six and a half blocks of grid and you're at the end of the cycle, you do get Celestial, so this is really, really big. Uh, Bolt Struck uses that dash to get out. Be very careful. Oh, the way that Bolt Struck was able to vary the air momentum was crucial in setting up that combo. <gasps> but Toast is alive. Not anymore. Nanase took you out at the knees. She's short. She can do that. Love that adaptation from Bolt Struck. We've seen so often this exact sequence where they throw the Orbiter into the follow-up, into the C version for the extra plus frames. At the end of that last round, Bolt Struck recognized it was going to come out. Use the creeping edge that you'd been talking about so much previously in the bracket to get around it and get a punish. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, then we had the reversal coming out. And I really think the reversal was more for spacing than anything else for Bolt Struck. But did get a little bit of damage coming out. You're trying to use his projectiles to just maintain composure at this point. Oh, nice change shift to see what was incoming. Changing the jump trajectory to just mess a little bit with the way that Toast is expecting Nanase to fall. But now with a throw and then the wall bounce is going to be able to get a pretty good amount of damage here. Tech on the throw, what's next? Because this could be the end of Bolt Struck here. Chain shift to keep it safe, but Bullstruck having one more reversal option up their sleeve. The Veil off, and now things are so dangerous for Toast. You have the meter for an extra mix up. The overhead connects, chain shift to follow it and get the full confirm, and Bullstruck takes game one. Great adjustments on the fly there from Bullstruck. I really thought that uh, Toast was feeling it. I thought that Toast was doing a great job making, you know, coming in, having thought the Namaste Gauntlet, like you were talking about. It's like, okay, cool. And then Boltstruck said, but what if you did not? <laughs> and just really was able to maintain a great combo structure. I, I think in particular, the thing that I wanted to point out in that was the way they were varying their air momentum was huge. The way they could sort of stall themselves midair really made Toast second guess where Boltstruck was going to be on screen. I love that you touched on that. Was, if you didn't, I was about to. Great! <laughs> So many times they've been going for those delayed dive kicks. They hop up just above Toast and make you think that you're going to land and then sneak in that overhead the last second. That, however, is in the no. past, though, as uh, we got in the game, too, and Toast has made quick work of the first round. Yeah, good work. And I mean, I, I'm I, that, I'm sorry that that sounded really skeptical. It, it didn't mean to come out that way. It was like, yeah, that was a really good first round. But when Boltstruck starts using some of the things that varied so heavily, just like this in the previous game, how does Toast react? Toast obviously has clean offense. It's the defense and Toast's ability to adjust to any changes that are happening mid-match that seem to be putting them behind and on the back foot with Boltstruck. Definitely. In the first set, we saw them holding down back for dear life. In this one, they've been trying to challenge a little bit more, but the success rate has varied. It has. So now we're seeing Post trying to open up Bolt Struck again. Bolt Struck doesn't need to do anything. This is Bolt Struck's game to lose, so they need to be careful. Um, and unfortunately, they did get hit. The chain shift there is going to be what's going to secure them that round. And it really was, the health differential was so significant that Boltstruck just had to be really careful. They did take that one hit, but the chain shift because the cycle went in their favor was pretty key. Good stuff. Toast though, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt you, Toast though here, you know, once again, offense, excellent. So what's your defense option? There it is, the creeping edge, the, the touching on so early and so often in this bracket. Been able to get around the Nanase projectile pressure this time, but you represented it once. Now Boltstruck's aware that you're going to try that in, again in the future, so they can get an opportunity to switch things up in the Mm hmm All right. Ooh, backdash. Risky, but worth it. That time the Veil Off does work out for Boltstruck. Sitting with the Celestial as well. Uh, curious what they were going to do. They just ran up through twice. Please do a third one. I beg you. Oh, no. Did have a green shield there briefly. 
still blocking once again, and there was the chain shift because I'm pretty sure Bolt Strike was sniffing out a run up throw from Toast, and now it's not gonna matter. 200 EXS gonna be able to end this clean. Look at this animation. You want an animation? It's gorgeous animations. Here we are. I've never seen this super. Well, today's we go. today's the day. First time for anything. Where is he going? Break down. Hide. Come back. No, he they're did. Still, they're, st they're still need you. There's one more game. They nope. still need you on set. Nope. He's gone. I l oh. I just really like if, if you've seen any of Nanase's ending dialogue for any character, it's just all like, "I'm gonna get hide. I'm gonna get hide." Nanase is having her revenge. I'm happy for you, girl. <laughs> <laughs> uh, bold struck avenging their fallen compatriot William H. Wright or Willard H. Wright, excuse me. Uh, going up 2 0 in the set. Immediate guard thrust from Bold Struck wants to get the momentum started, but Toast having none of it. The offense that you touched on earlier being stifling before that reversal attempt. Right, and once again, I just want to see what Toast can do on the defensive side of things. Yes, we've seen the creeping edge, and there we have the chain shift with the throw, but because there was no wall bounce, unlike this one, there wasn't a lot of combo afterwards. That time, because there was also the CS, was able to finish it out. But I like the adjustment. Thank you, Toast, for actively making that, so I got to talk about it. That was really fun. Beautiful. And now Bullstruck changing up their their approaches a little bit, following that fireball a little bit higher than some of the previous ones. Standard offense catching Bullstruck, but no confirm. Bullstruck has CS to work with. They can make a mix up happen. Keeping the fireballs going oh. the shimmy! That was such a clutch catch on the side of Bullstruck. There was a little bit of movement on the side of Toast, and unfortunately for them, Bullstruck caught it. Now they're stuck into the corner, and Toast has to make something happen with this defense, or else Bullstruck's going to be one away. What's going to happen here? Odyssey just threw you. I love it. And then getting caught by the disc once again as it was coming back. That does do damage outgoing in incoming. It's active for pretty much the whole time. Oh, active indeed. Active enough to catch Toast teching to try to challenge on the ground. Goldstruck's usage of these discs have been immaculate. Any time, just toss the disc, run up, and they have to guess strike or throw. Toast has been baiting on the throw so often. And the mentality, look at Toast. Toast is crumbly. He's crumbly Toast. He's out of the toaster and now he's falling apart. Uh, I did. Okay, there was a little. I like the challenge. I like throwing out the A there from Bolt Struck, but it's not. It's not paying anything off. Be careful. CS. Okay, and then because Nanase got hit, the disc is gone. Doesn't matter. Getting the throw. Black Orbiter follow up, and you're gonna get the uh, first, second, third. Oh, now what's gonna happen? This is actually really. Miss the follow up. Bolt Struck wins the cycle. So Toast has to rely on the meter, and Bolt Struck is not afraid to challenge. Yeah, third on stream, so Defiant played Kuon the first time we saw them, Hyde the second time, and so now we're seeing the Laundrekia, the fabled Laundrekia that really made people open their eyes a little bit more at Frosty Faustings earlier this year, back in January, right when Uni 2 had just come out. Yeah, I, it took me a little bit to, you know, start catching up on what was going on with Uni 2 since uh, it, it came out earlier on PlayStation, and I don't have that. Uh, but at Frosty Faust things, I was able to see, you know, what Lundrecki is doing in this version of the game. Saw the, yeah, saw the new roots, saw the new super that has been plaguing people's games against Lundrecki and being like, oh, this character is... They're making up for what they did in clear. This character has got some sauce now. Yeah, so in case you want to be watching out for that while Bolt Struck is doing a great job with this Nanase here, that new super, it can only be done when Lundrekia is in the air, and it looks like icicles raining from the sky on a diagonal. If you're familiar with uh, Chie from Persona, it looks like the meatballs that she throws out from the sky. Lundrekia also has another special mechanic, which is this ice mechanic. So if you're hit once, you get put into a chilled state. If you're hit again with Londrekia, you then become frozen, which we saw Bolt Struck become frozen there. If they get hit again, okay, they broke it. You can always watch for that chilled state uh, because there's a little, like, diamond little crystal under Londrekia's uh, wind points that you can keep an eye on. 
one of the crucial things about playing against Andrekia with the you know chilled state in mind is that fielding things that put that debuff on you make them not do so on block. Uh, Correct. So it, it makes you have to choose your opportunities for shield very carefully. Wondrekia well, has a lot of tools to get around shield as well to bolster that offense. Alright. Now the bolt struck is doing a great job trying to open things up. Oh, that was going to look like... That, I think that looked like the 4C coming out of Defiant, which uh, hits once on the ground and then will hit once with an overhead. It's just a little bit of thing. Oh, counter hit. Okay, so Defiant does lose that one. Are we going to continue to see the Lundrekia? Yeah, that... Okay, we are. Yeah. Okay. I, it's always a question when a player like, like Defiant, who is so well-versed in the cast like we spoke about earlier, mm -hmm. when they lose, are they going to stay? Are they not going to stay? Defiant definitely seems like one of those players that will play at least a full set of a character. I know some some people are are very like you know drop one game switch immediately. Defiant has confidence in every single character they play. You drop one game, cool, that's fine. I've won tournaments on this character. I have results. I can make things happen. I know it. Okay. Nice stuff. And then, yeah, so Lundrekia does have those good projectiles. Good use of the Creeping Edge to get out of the corner, giving Bolt Struck an advantage in that exchange. Oh? I like the use of the EX projectile from Defiant, just trying to put some space in between. Yeah, being real careful with those four Cs, and then the follow-up too. So Lundrekia also has a Rekka String that you can vary depending on whether you're pressing A, B, or C, how you're going to end, like on same side, other side, or an overhead little knockdown situation. It just depends, but big damage, and then Bolt Struck has to be careful because they're in that sort of chilled state. Anything, any clip could be the end of Bullstruck in this round, and Defiant knows it. Great throw tech from Bullstruck, but the pressure had gaps. Defiant using that force function, invincible reversal from Londrekia. Just you're pressing. If you leave a gap in your pressure, I'm taking advantage of it. I'm taking the round. Thank you. Very much. That's some nice. Nice, calm, neutral for a second. I was like, oh my god, I get to breathe? Crazy. Only a brief respite, though. Yeah, that's There's true. We're, we're oh. in there, the there b Rekka. Mm-hmm, b Rekka. Oh, I love the use of that. There was a little bit of force function in there, too. Oh, look at the setup, too, with the frozen. And then you're getting the that ice sort of flower that just has the projectiles on it behind. Wondrekia is just kind of mean. So is Defiant, though, with the grid break afterwards, too. Nanase is smoothing out of there, smoothing, if you will. But the overhead, and there it was, the ice overhead blocked that, but unfortunately wasn't ready for the low just because of the way that Londrakia can maneuver themselves in the air. And like you said, Defiant loves to see these out. Would a character switch have been any different? I don't know, but the Londrakia in Defiant's hands is very strong. It is incredibly strong indeed. The turnaround as well from game one to two was marked. It, game yes. one was looking you know, a bit of a toss up. Both struck coming out very strong, but Defiant also getting their bearings a little bit. And then game two is immediately Defiant looked like they sat forward in the chair. She said, okay, that, that's enough. Gamer stance. I dropped one was. game in this tournament, that's, enough. that's too many. Yeah, no, unacceptable. Ooh, yeah, little... I like the idea of trying to win the Grin Cycle there for both of them. Boltstruck making a really good attempt in this round, putting a significant life lead on the board. Unlike Melty Blood, uh, where there is a way that you can recover missing health in that game, unless you're Gordo or Carmine, there is no universal function for that in this game. I love what Defiant did with that chain shift there in the previous interaction. They saw Bullstruck was jumping, they saw the red mist, and instead of going for a reversal, they opted to shield the jump in. in this version of the game, jump ins, if you shield them, are punishable on landing, and said, okay, you know, I could get a, just a DP punish, or I could get something higher value. Right, ooh, switch into the chain shift there. 
Gotta be careful. I like just these 5A pokes from Defiant. What's gonna connect? And then varying it with these longer pressure strings, but Boltstruck is the one who's gonna be able to win that with the EX. Oh, Defiant just ran Boltstruck down like two thirds of the screen with just 5A, 5A, 5A. Do something. I dare you. Try something. Try something. I dare you. Boltstruck finally found it with a jump back dive kick. That's one run. You gotta make that happen again. And Defiant is already working on this round. You're in the corner. You have the chill debuff on you. You've lost half your health. They're keeping up the plus frames. Help somebody! Let me out! This is so terrifying. Oh my goodness. Defiant on the offense. Good lord! Power set up behind you. Bullstruck able to get out eventually, but at what cost? The health differential at this point is insane. You're one reversal away from death if you're Bullstruck. You have to keep things tight. If you don't, that force function's coming up. Mm -hmm. Also, yes, thank you for the correction. I was I was not correct. It is just Carmine that gains health back. Gordo gets grid from his uh, command grab. So thank you for that correction. I appreciate that. I'll keep that in mind for the future. Thank you. Bullstruck is going to be keeping uh, these shield timings in mind for the future as well. As we've seen a couple of times where they have gone for a shield attempt to either you know, push Defiant out or negate those shield debuffs, and they've gotten grid broken for it. Losing the cycles, taking the extra damage, you're put in the corner of this one. Dracula's unstoppable! Feel the bust out with the infinite worth! Yeah, unfortunately though, not. I mean, it's gonna even up stuff, but it's not going to be able to win you anything. Defiant still in the advantageous position, and then with the follow up on the Rekka string, going to be able to take the next game. Defiant. Defiant really did say one was enough. Defiant, I continue. You can... You can see just how in Boltstruck's head Defiant was with that interaction. Mm -hmm. They keep running up and just checking with jabs. Little short buttons that make you want to backdash away from them to make them whiff. And Defiant knew that. And instead of going for that extra jab there at the end, dashed up a little bit extra, stuck out a 5B to cover that option and take a second game. That's good. It is so much fun to get to watch Defiant play because, again, his expertise at uni in general is just, it shines here. And the counter into this chain shift, Boltstruck once again in that chilled state has to be so careful not to be hit by any of Lundrakia's moves because they will be frozen. It did just wear off because there was a little bit of an exchange of damage. And a grid break from the throw on the Defiant. This could be Boltstruck's chance to actually get some significant damage onto the board. Another throw. I dare you to do it again. Please do it. Ooh, chain shift back dash. Ooh, was faking out the throw there. But unfortunately, if you come in to take out the throw, you have to be prepared for whatever happens afterward. And unfortunately, because it was just a back dash, Boltstruck was not. It was not. And time again, not ready. They tried the up back dive kick that had worked previously. This time, Defiant covered it. They tried to shield. Defiant had it uh, on lockdown again. And now they're putting themselves on set point. Reversal with but full struck too far away, so no consequences for it. Able to start something, but just a 3C punish with no confirm is not what you need, Bullstruck. You need something more. You're down on tournament point. Oh my goodness. So that chain shift. I thought that was going to be a really great thing, but Defiant instantly grabbed, and now you're frozen. Once again, you're hit by the ice, and all that Defiant did was gain grid, because now they won the cycle because of that. They were perfectly safe. It was a totally safe option, but for Boltstruck, it's terrifying. Situation equally so. Defiant stealing the corner and placing the flower so that it shoots backwards. Catching Boltstruck's attempt at a backdash. Now you're in the opposite corner. You have the debuff on you. You whip a reversal, not punished fully. The shimmy doesn't connect. No. Boltstruck has one opportunity, finds a touch, is going to be able to create an OP situation here. But just like the previous round, reversals are your enemy as your health bar is draining. Oh my gosh, oh gosh, that was really scary. Boltstruck's movement, very risky there with the backdash. 
went in for the throw, but Defiant was able to catch it. And then by using the chain shift, almost close. What's the change in the air trajectory? All right, able to get out now. Bolt struck with a sliver of life, a glimpse of hope. What are you going to be able to do? Because the life differential is huge. The differential is huge, and the timer is winding down. You have to make your move soon. 14 oh. seconds. Got the hit, but didn't confirm. Leaving Defiant an opportunity to reversal out and take another one. Take the tournament.